So, we're going to spend some time having a look at the uh, Inkscape's future plans in in regards to user experience, right? So, one of the one of the best ways to talk about the future development is to look at the designs for those features. Now, not all um, not all feature requests have been translated into user experience issues because we are, we're kind of selective about what we want to spend time th think, thinking about. But if there are individuals in the community that want to drive a certain kind of uh, feature, if they, if they are truly passionate about a specific issue, then I see no reason with uh, giving people the space in the user experience team to be able to talk about how a, a problem should be solved or how a feature should be designed. So the first thing is is GitLab. Now GitLab is a is a platform for collaboration. We use it primarily for code, but we also use it for a lot of our other teams, such as the Vectors team that uses it to create issues which uh, allow them to track whether so, so social media has been contacted. Um, the the website team uses it for its own purposes. Uh, the board uses it to track uh, lots of issues. In in the UX team, uh, the way that we're using it so far has been to track uh, discussions about designs. So if you go to the link re referenced here, which I will type into the chat, uh, you will hopefully be able to see. And and if anybody can't see, then I will uh, fix the permissions if there is any issues. You can visit this this page. And have a look at some of the the existing issues. There's not there's not many of them. There's 26 open uh, UX issues, and then you can have a look at um, the kinds of priority. You'll notice that they all have thumbs up and thumbs down. Um, and I want you to put your thumb up or down whether you think that the 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 feature is some something we should be focusing on. Um, you know, this this kind of thing is important to, to see uh, if Inkscape as a project itself wanted to commit money or resources or time doing a certain thing, having your, your thumb uh, will help uh, to set, set the kind of priority because we'll be able to see what, what users are really passionate about. Um, also, if you do a thumbs down, if you think like, we shouldn't do a thing. Obviously, it'll also help other independent developers. So, like, if somebody is a developer who comes along and wants to have a look at some of the designs that are possible to do, some of the, the features, big and small, this is a great list to be able to kind of kick into because there's some resources here that have been spent on trying to think about problems. Yeah, so I, I'll clarify for this a lot here. He's asking a question about whether when a UX issue should be in the inbox and when it shouldn't be. So the inbox is a, is a place where um, requests from users go um, who are basically making a suggestion, hey, you should improve this or you, you should add this feature or Inkscape would be better if it did this. And um, the main difference is that UX issues have a driver to, to, to commit resources to thinking about the problem, right? So that's like the main issue. In, inbox, if something is in the inbox, then it, it it's basically admitting that we do not have resources to think about this, right? Whether it's a, a crash, which means that we don't have resources to uh, confirm that it's a crash, right? Because don't forget, like all, all inbox issues, they get moved to the Inkscape issues tra tracker when we've confirmed them, right? We've confirmed that this is an issue. It is a regression. It is a problem. Um, in terms of UX, it gets moved when we have reason to commit time to it. So if a user, UX designer um, has time to commit an issue to, to commit to an issue that's in in the inbox. Then then we can move it all over, and they can start the dialogue. They can start recruiting resources to to focusing on on the issue, raising the discussion. Right, because because it moves from being a suggestion to being something that is actively being worked at. Um, obviously, the, the like being in the in the UX issues tra tracker is not a promise that a thing will be completed. Um, or that you'll be able to find developers to work on it, but it is the sort of the next step up for for, for a feature request because as I as I said I think I think all features need to have 
um, user experience and design attention paid to to them to make sure that that um, when they reach a developer that the, the the direction has been thought about and some time has been thought into how users would interact with it and how many users it would affect. Um, so I think I think we can actually go look go and have a look at some of these uh, feature requests and see how how important and what we think of each of them. Uh, let me see. I think what I'll do is I'll split out my Firefox and I'll share that screen so I can see everybody still. I've noticed that the, the GitLab is using a um, mobile theme, so if the screen is too is too narrow, it, it doesn't look very good. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, hopefully, it won't crash. And so I'm gonna... So I hope everybody can see this. See this list. This is the this is a list of all of the current um, UX issues, and then along the right hand side, you'll be able to see the the thumbs up, which is the the sort of um, the amount of pressure that that users want to apply. And then there's the comments, and this can tell you sort of how active the the issue is. So if there's a lot of discussion that's happened on an issue. Uh, some of these, for instance, this one here, uh, customer, customizability of widgets in, in Skip's widget list. Um, this might be because uh, Mark has asked for help with the UI, but but we've not actually had a um, any time to work on on thinking about what, whatever the specific issue is here. This is a clear case where if if Mark was just a, like a regular user coming in, then that would probably be, be in the inbox. Um, but because Mark's a developer, he's, his developer is asking for help, then the, it's gone into the UX um, team list. That probably seems like a bit of an exception. Um, so here's, here's an example I'm going to show, show you of a, of a feature request that um, I, I have developed. So I created this issue uh, three months ago. It came from, from a Twitter piece, which was essentially complaining that Inkscape uh, did not have the same keys as other editors and so we had to do some research first of all to find out why the, this user thinks that's the case so we we pitted um inkscape which currently uses control and shift for the size and center constraints and then we we uh collected all the information about all the other programs that inkscape gets compared to um and this list is actually fascinating right so it's clear that inkscape most closely resembles coral draw uh, and not Illustrator, which is probably why Illustrator users are, are more uncomfortable. Um, and then the question is, is what to do about this problem, right? So that we have a situation here where users uh, can sometimes be made uncomfortable because the, the, the modifier keys that we're using are not as they would expect them to. Uh, now, a lot of users are actually very strident. They say um, Inkscape should use the industry standard. But of course, as you can see from this list, there is no such thing, right? The, the, lots of different programs are using different modifier keys. So we have to be careful about when we when we decide what is and is not an industry stand, standard because it completely depends on perspective, uh, which is why uh, I, I made sure that we had this this uh, classifier to decide what kind of a program it was. You'll notice that art programs except for Coral Draw and Inkscape use Shift and Alt um, in this in this configuration. But um, other programs don't. Other programs are all over the place. So once we had some information, and thank you very, very much for all of the help that I got from the, this, this, this discussion, um, the question was then what to do, right? So you'll notice that this issue doesn't move from here because this is kind of just the discussion that's happening. Um, that I needed in terms of user user experience. This has gone off then to programming, right? So there's a there's a there's a merge request that's happening in in another part of Inkscape um, that tracks my modifications to the code base that then uh, relate back to, to to this. I don't remember actually if I if I linked it back. I hope I did. 
Um, I'm sorry if, if there's any chat. I can't actually see the chat right now. Um, if there's any quest questions going on. Uh, so the idea is is that once I have once I have a workable uh, solution, right, the code is in a, is in a good place. I'm going to follow the same pattern that um, Valentine is going to use for his for his uh, Google Summer of Code, and I'm going to ask the UX slash design team to help me test and refine the design to make sure that this new fe feature, uh, the new feature by the way is a, is a uh, to be able to configure the the um, the modifier keys, not just for the for the size constraint and center constraint, but actually for a lot of different functions, um, which hopefully it, it it's also cleaning up a bunch of code. So from a developer perspective, there's there's actually more of a reason to do do this than just um, just the, the the user experience aspects. Um, so this is this is this pro process that's got going on, but it's it's. It's nascent, right? It's, this is very new. Um, you'll notice that there's not that many UX issues. That's because this this team is pretty new. So we're still open to um, deciding what the processes should be uh, between developers, uh, user experience, and design people. Um, but what I want to hear from people today is what kind of features should be worked on? What, what are the things that in, in Inkscape 1.0 we should definitely make happen? Um, I, I, my personal push, like the thing that I'm going to be pushing for pretty hard, is the multiple, um, the uh, what is it called, multiple pages, um, which is at the top here. Simply because I think it's a it's a feature that we really really need. It's a feature that we've talked about in pre previous hackfests. It's a feature that like developers are on board with with creating. Um, uh, and I think the expansion would make Inkscape a much more useful func functional piece of so and software, um, especially when it comes to PDFs and, and, and interacting with other other tools. This 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 actually has taken us a long time to do simply because SVG itself doesn't have paid pages, and therefore this functionality will have to extend SVG in a way that I think before the California Hackfest we weren't as com comfortable with with doing. So. Um, if you're wondering, like why, uh, why now, right? Why after all, all these years? That that's why. Um, so if you're interested in this discussion, please please do join it. Please do thumbs up if you if you are interested. Um, I know that there's there's an awful lot of discussion going on in here. Uh, please do public chat if there's a specific issue uh, from this list that you think we should we should talk about, right? Because we were talking before with Adam about uh, what the process is. Um, and what kind of discussions we should be having to, to make this a healthy and um, interactive uh, contribution. So like all of the contributors who are designers who want to be able to contribute to Inkscape, uh, is this a good way for them? What is the most productive way of engaging so that they, their work doesn't feel like it's, it's you know, running into, the, um, running into the buffers, right? So they're not getting the kind of response that they, they, they need. Um, I'm gonna give this a break for now. Um, and if there's no if there's no um, interesting discussions to be had, I'm, I'm willing to just uh, talk about future plans of Inkscape. Yeah, so Jorge says that multiple pages is a winner, definitely. Yeah, I think it's also on the on the bigger side. Um, there are bigger pro projects like C CMYK, but that is much less of a UX issue. I, uh, part of me wishes that Patrick was here so that we could have a talk about his particular issues about design. Because I think he, he was talking, uh, was it yesterday or the day before, with me and Adam on Rocket Chat. Uh, Patrick is a developer. He, he, he mostly f focuses on the win Windows development side. Um, and he, he'd read the, uh, the user experience uh, ticket that we have. 
and had some concerns about the way in which we were developing it, um, that maybe it was too big or maybe we lacked scope. Uh, you know, we, that we had done all of the steps that Adam best specified in terms of uh, understanding the power problem and making sure that we were designing to the problem. Um, so, it comes to deciding what the requirements should be for the multi-page support. Um, I believe we decided on making sure that it could function as artboards, that the pages themselves would be visible on the screen at the same time, that basically you weren't just flipping through paid pages and then it was changing the screen. Um, that the user coordinates were specific to each of the pages, which meant that items, uh, objects had to be specific to a page. And if they weren't on a page, then they were on the cam cam canvas and therefore they had their own specific coordinates. That there, were, there was clipping involved so that you could uh, restrict what was visible outside of the uh, outside of the page. That was important. Um, that you could move the pages around and resize them um, so that um, you know your your uh, you could basically quickly position a whole bunch of pages of different sizes, uh, but also that you could open up a PDF, for instance, and have the pages laid out automatically for for you. So like these these are like the core pieces of functionality we needed to make sure that whatever we did to the SVG, whatever we did to want to define what multiple pages meant, um, we'd, we'd support that. When it comes to exporting to PDF, that technically is an, 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 an extra fe feature. It doesn't sound like, like, like it, but it kind of is because you can do a lot of the fun functionality without having that piece, but it's nowhere near as useful if you don't have it. Um, the other one, which is, which is browser, Visibility, like what what you show to the to the browser, um, that one's interesting because SVG and browser support is a contentious issue. Uh, some people see the SVG spec as a browser only subject. That you know that SVGs are made to be displayed in a browser. Therefore, functionality that cannot be displayed in a browser is not really SVG. And I don't agree. I think Inkscape needs to be able to stand up on its own and say, no, actually, when it comes to things like pages, we will, um, you know, arbiter our, our own decisions uh, when it comes to making sure this fun functionality can exist. Um, but then the, the question is still, and, and so what do you show with a browser? And uh, so far, um, the solution that, we've, that I've come to and, and feel free to disagree and, and comment actually here in the chat or in, in, in the issue, is that the, the canvas is not a page and the canvas is like a view that is shown to a browser. So if you want to show like a, a one, page, one specific page or you want to show a piece of a page or like some view that is, is shown on, in a web browser and is shown as the default when you, know, when you save an SVG and it renders it to, a, to an icon, so you can you can you know organize your files and things. That's the view that will be rent rendered, right? That, that's the view that will be rendered as sort of like the preview. Um, and to me, that that's an elegant solution because we already know that the coordinates in all of the pages will be their own coordinate systems. Yes, the page will be uh, defined itself uh, according to the coordinates of the can canvas, but that 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 you know it's transforms. It's fine. It's easy to it's easy to position things. Um, but the coordinate system of the canvas uh, itself, like the, this preview thing, is um, you know it's its own little thing that's different from pages, which I think is important to to, to conceptualize and then and then to describe to the user. Um, but of course, this does mean that our user interface needs to change, um, especially the document properties, because. Um, a lot of what we have currently where we describe page sizing and, and, and selecting page sizes and changing the thing, that like none of that makes any sense anymore with multi-page. A, a lot of it needs to be renamed to canvas size or document preview or some, some other really nice uh, text um, box. Um, but, I think, but I think a redesign of that page is necessary anyway. Um, it's not, so what, what would happen, right? So if we developed the multi-page support and we didn't change the, the, the document properties to dialog, is we practically have a, an incomplete feature, right? We'd have a user experience night, nightmare. So we couldn't, we probably couldn't ship like that, but we could definitely 
complete the functionality, uh, uh, you know, to, to keep things contained. We could definitely complete the functionality and then then deal with all of the fallout, right? So we'd, we'd be creating some destruction along the way, but then we'd have to be responsible for cleaning it up and making sure that things like that were, were appropriately defined. I mean, a great example of that is when you go to export a PNG and you currently, I think it, I think it even says page, right? When, when, you know, when you, when you describe what the size should be, um, yeah, page drawing selection custom. That page is alive. It's not a page. It's it's the the preview, uh, or the document, or like whatever the, the the language that we want to use. So there's going to be lots of places in the code where we need to adjust um, how we're describing that to, to users. Um, so Adam is saying, uh, I think that's a good solution for performance. That's not a problem UX can solve. Oh, he's answering a question. Performance improvements. Yeah, so performance improvements is definitely not a UX issue. Uh, it, is a, it is a user experience issue in terms of the user experience sucks because it's really, really slow, especially on a Mac. Um, but it definitely isn't something that can be designed away. It's just a highly technical problem that needs to have researchers and programmers work at the back end, um, at the call face. So it's something to push for in terms of resourcing, right? So like to make sure that we can uh, prioritize resources if we can get them to, to, to focus on these issues. One of the things, for example, is um, if Rene can work on some of the performance issues for the Mac, then, then asking him to, and alternatively finding Mac developers, recruiting Mac developers to work on the Mac performance issues, uh, or paying Mac, de Mac developers to work on the performance issues, but like not none of that is a UX issue. Yeah, so Hi is saying that uh, other programs like Illustrator have uh, the same issue of having a page set up and then multiple artboards uh, in real life. Oh wait, what does IRC mean? I always forget. Uh, so I think he's saying that Illustrator's design could be improved um yeah, i mean please don't... i think yeah i think you mentioned uh it doesn't make sense to have a, like a page setup panel if you're going to set up different pages afterwards or different uh artboards i understood that from what you were saying i think that happens as an illustrator you set up a page and then uh you can uh, you can set multi multiple artworks, which are actually pages with different sizes, etc. So it doesn't make all that sense anymore. The, it's more like an initial setting. Yeah. So I, I think it's an issue. It's not only would wouldn't only be in, in Inkscape. In other programs, programs do have it. So it would be good to. I mean, the good news is, is that uh, user uh, designers who contribute to Inkscape, um, their their work will go into uh, millions of users' hands, and they'll provide access to proficient tools. Users that tweet to Adobe Illustrator uh, to help them, I mean, <laughs> uh, contributing to a commercial product. So um, yes, I think you're right in terms of uh, uh, lots of different tools. Uh, try to tackle this issue in a different way or in a way that's conflicting because it's not it's not an easy problem to, 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 to think about um, but I think we can I think we can do this I think we can do multi-page um, with a bit of a little bit of creative destruction right we need to destroy the current concept of page um, and then fill it in with something new uh, what this means for existing SVGs is that all existing SVGs have zero pages um, right, they they don't have any. They have uh, just the canvas preview, and that's it. Um, which is fine because then you can create new pages on top of that. That that would be completely consistent, and there'd be no conversion required. Um, when it comes to exporting a page that has no, um, like you say, if you want to save as a PDF, when it comes to exporting that, I think it would be completely relevant to to. Um, have it just fall back and say, oh, you, you don't have any pages, so I'm just going to like export the, the, the view. Um, so like the, I think this is a, I think this is a good solution, right? A good design. Um, but this is why we bring it to more brains so that more brains can mull it over and, and think about it. Um, it's also why we want to recruit, right? We want to go on to 
social media. We want to go into places where Inkscape users hang out and say, hey, Inkscape users, come contribute, come help us. More brains, more better. And, and we'll be able to kind of think about some of these issues and, 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 and especially when it comes to the corner cases, right? People who do different things. Uh, like I'm not even sure that pages makes any sense for people who do uh, CNC work, right? They barely need anything to, to like draw a cog on a thing and send it to, to a DXF printer to cut something out. Um, so for them, it might actually clean, clean it up for them because they, they'll no longer have to concern themselves with pay, a page size at all. They can just open Inkscape, there's a, an area and they start drawing stuff. Although then again, they do need an origin. Yeah, so maybe they do. Um, one of the one of the other user experience, uh, uh, sorry, I keep on saying user experience, in this case is user design. Uh, one of the other user design uh, features is, is a, an onboarding screen. So there's, there's, there's the screen that comes up when you first start Inkscape and then there's a screen that comes up when uh, you launch Inkscape again, right? You're creating a new document. Um, the onboarding screen is for basically selecting a theme and selecting a default page size and selecting uh, the uh, keyboard profile, say if you wanted the Illustrator keyboard pro profile and maybe even the language. Um, you know, those things of initial load and then and then afterwards when you want to create a new document being able to just select the right pages and stuff that that, that that's a new design as well that needs more brains to to make sure that we're getting that right um but i i'm personally going to prioritize multi-page support over the on onboarding screen for now um it would be really nice actually to do the onboarding screen as a python program but other developers hate that idea so uh I don't know why. I think Python is cool. <laughs> so can the questions be more structured? Maybe it's a complex issue and everybody jumped at the current issue at the same time. It would be crazy. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, there's a lot to read on that multi-page issue, for example. Um, so there might be a case to be made to close a user UX issue and, and migrate all of the uh, positive contributions, like the things that have, have got you up to the next stage where you are, you are uh, in, the, in, the, in whatever Adam called like the next stage of the, of the development. Um, but there's definitely a case to be made for that because a lot of these issues can get very complicated and, and they're just narrowing down the questions that are left to answer. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of these questions when it comes to these complicated features, they need to kind of just be answered one after another, and then you don't want to retread them. Um, if I can interject, I usually don't create a new issue. I just continuously, continuously update the issue with the current best solutions or current solutions into the issue. Right, so you, you would, would you prefer that as an organizational okay. principle? To be honest, I'm not sure because on the one hand, it would be cleaner than creating a new issue, but on the other hand, we are kind of losing uh, our creation of the, the original issue, but I don't know. I, I feel like it's more important to be clean, so I would I would prefer probably keeping it in and until it's still kind of contained with the discussion and all. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it depends case by case. <clears throat> if the discussion is going too crazy or off topic, yeah, probably close the issue and start a new one. But if it's still like evolving and it's still on the point, but it's just too much information in and we just need to recollect it and reformat and try to summarize it at the beginning, it still can be in one issue. Yeah, I mean, we can always link back as well. Uh, one of the things that we can have is um, we can have some of the stages defined as tags that you can apply to these to, to the issues in GitLab. Um, so if we wanted to have boards, for instance, where we, we um, could see, for instance, multi-page at this stage and then multi-page at a different stage could be a new issue so that we, we're having a different discussion. Um, say, for instance, if we developed it, and then we needed to have testing to see to make sure that the user experience was correct. 
uh, that would be a good, I think, a good can, can candidate for uh, creating a new issue. And um, this, yes. The, the, this, yes, I agree. Uh, the discovery issue, right? This this fifty seven comment issue that we currently have, the, the it's it, it's probably at the stage where it needs to be a new issue so that it can we can decide what questions we need to answer, like we have yet to do. Um, for example, I think it's at the stage where the actual user experience and the technical aspects are, have been answered, but the uh, user interface design uh, has not, right? The actual specifics of whether we have a toolbar or a tool and, and whether, like, what happens when you select a page and, and all of that stuff. Those are all questions that need to be answered. So yeah. maybe that's a good candidate for a new issue. Yeah, I think we should we could close it and just try to summarize and ask the new questions, I guess. First, I think there's also an interesting feature in GitLab, which maybe will require a lot of discipline to be used properly. But is this you have these comments on an issue, and then you have like threads replies inside a comment. So if an issue was structured, like putting in several comments the main question that's going to be addressed underneath, you can have like different threaded conversations inside the same issue. It would require some probably some moderation and some discipline from people joining the conversation, but it could be a way of having all the key topics or questions uh, inside the same issue. And that's a good idea, actually. So you're you're saying that if we created a new issue for a design or for a user experience or, or design issue, we um, we're asking some questions, and so for each of those questions that we need to ask answer, we create a new thread, right? So we we seed the topics, and then exactly. people who people who join in, they are required to uh, comment inside of that inline, so that 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 question is being answered you know consistently within in, inside of the lines and then if anybody an, a, um, adds a new entry to the bottom uh we moderate it right so we we delete it or we uh, edit it can we move comments like i i can see that this is going to be nobody's going to ab ab obey the laws of the comments like it's a good yeah. idea get me wrong but yeah, no, I, I, this is what this is one of the things where you have to consider um, training. So there's going to be uh, for any any requirement where we require people to co collaborate in a certain kind of way, um, a difficulty in convincing them to um, uh, perform in a certain direction. Uh, this might just take time, right? This might just be like we'll 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 collect together a, a, a nucleus of of. Um, UX team UX mem members, and I hope everybody who's interested in the UX team has joined the UX team on the on the website. Um, right, so like all of those individuals will understand the rules, and then and then most of the discussions will happen between developers and those in individuals, and then it's just making sure the developers understand uh, what the rules are. Um, yeah, as long as we set them right. Yeah, also those rules can be made uh, easily. Quite clear, for example, in the same issue, you can add like a, just a little banner or something that explains a bit, uh, how is it going to work. And it seems it is kind of difficult to get everyone to, to follow a certain way of commenting and interacting because we are naturally quite chaotic. But it may be more, more difficult to keep track of different open issues that are linked to each other unless we, again, carefully link them in the main issue so you know where to go for a certain debate. So it's probably the same difficulty in moderating both approaches. Like you have one one single thread where people can be commenting out of the of the thread, but you can also have different issues and people will be commenting about something in a different issues. It's just it's like email that like people don't follow the the subject of the email and reply with another issue. It's, I will say one thing. Can be made. I, I will add one thing, which is that if if in an issue that you you and somebody else seems to go, seem to be going backwards and forwards, especially quickly, um, I would move that to Rocket Chat, and then you can have a discussion in real time. If that's going poor, poorly, like you just can't seem to figure out I to I, I would try and do a video chat, um, simply yeah. because the higher the higher bandwidth 
will does really help right be able to share screens and, and demonstrate and draw things and, and, and gesticulate to each other about the the issues that you want that you're concerned with um so like it, it, if people are concerned uh, you don't have to stick to gitlab it's just that whatever the result is of the discussion needs to be documented there yeah I think I like this idea of escalating, like of changing the channel depending on the type of conversation that's going to be had, and then may maybe escalating down again. Like someone goes to the GitLab and writes the confession of that discussion. Like we went uh, on a Skype call and we decided this, and we set all of this, and then write it on the issue. Absolutely. Um, and, I, would rec I would recommend J Jitsi to anybody, so we could probably document that. Just go to this Jitsi and have a video chat. Yeah, I'm perfect. Or, or Big Blue Button, if Mark is willing to commit, commit Big Blue Button to us forever. Um, so I think that's the, like the, these are the kinds of structures that will help the UX team really uh, be able to function, I think, with lots of contributors and people coming in and out. Um, Would this allow to, for example, I was thinking also beyond the discussion the issue. If you want to, for example, publish a poll on Twitter, I don't know, or any social media, we have, again, with a specific question, like we're discussing the use case of these artboards or pages, how would you approach, or I don't know, what some specific question about how people use them or what, or what do they want them for or something like that, understanding the issue. And those could be linked back to maybe, yeah, maybe not GitLab, maybe to the chat, that could be, not sure what the channel will be, but issuing specific calls for questions, and then yeah, and absolutely. I mean, I think I think there's definitely a case because we're going to be recruiting users, right? The, the, that's some of the issue that we're going to have to face is uh, being able to invite users to download a fresh version of Inkscape that's got some feature or some design in it, and um, asking them feed feedback, uh, or it might involve like we did with the meta keys, asking people. Um, for, for for different programs that they've heard of and what and test what keys do this fun functionality because like it wasn't just people looking up the documentation that they actually had to test it and see and see if it worked and I, I can't test Visio I can't test Illustrator I don't have those program programs so it was uh, it was good to be able to go off to a different tool like Twitter and ask questions do the research and then come back and document it. Um, so I've just posted a link to the UX team. Um, it looks like uh, that's you, George, right? Um, so it looks like we've got uh, two extra mem members today. Uh, it's not necessary to join their website team, but it is good because it allows me to see, as the website administrator, um, like how big teams are and, and who is uh, the contact, who is contactable. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these other issues. Um, feature requests for 1.0. Um, so the, Adam's created a, a spin buttons read, read, redesign, which is all about, as it was mentioned before, um, being able to have all the functionality that we want to, to resize and change things, but having them compact, having them styled well, uh, being able to use the, the scroll wheels, all, all that good stuff. Um, there's some really good uh, des des designs in here if, if anybody's interested. Uh, it doesn't look like we have a developer yet for that, so that's probably going to be one of those things that once we have a uh, solid understanding of what needs to happen, it's going to need to go to recruitment to, to find out to find somebody who can do the prototyping and then also do the, the development. Um, so that's a good example of where something, something isn't being driven by a developer. It's being driven by the UX team itself. Uh, they, they see a need and uh, need to be able to produce that. Uh, yes, sorry, yes, I, I, I'm not sharing my screen. Um, excellent. So uh, let me just go back to, to the, I can repeat myself. 
We have 10, 10 minutes, by the way. So if anybody's got a burning question about the next version of Inkscape, uh, this is definitely a time, a time to have it. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so when it comes to things like wish lists, uh, you know, be, be judicious because part of the uh, problem is going to be the amount of resources that um, you can commit to the issue. Uh, Inkscape is a project of collaborators, not a institution. So the amount of institutional resources we have is not only limited, but also weird. So I wouldn't depend on Inkscape being able to step in and do things. You have to be able to kind of do things for yourself. So if you say, oh, the Inkscape really needs this design or this experience improvement, uh, please do step up and, and like push it and, and, and ask for help and you know see where we can drive it. But it's that's going to be a lot easier for you if you have one issue than if you have 10. Um, I'm actually trying to limit the number of things that I'm working on for the next release because I also have the same issue, right? I, I don't have infinite time to develop everything that I need or want. Um, I, I've completely lost the spin buttons. There it is. It's, it's, it's a relatively small, small description. So here, here we can see that Adam's created a, um, a GIF, an animation showing the existing, uh, the way in which it works currently. Uh, these changed in G, GTK3, which I think is part, part of the issue here now. Uh, and then we have some designs. And now we can see some some alternative examples of the way things work in Blender uh, and, and, the, and the kinds of properties it has. And then we have a discussion. So we can see, I think there's no there's no tag, right, Adam, for whether something has a developer or not. But, the, but you can see there's no there's no assignee currently. So I think that's a pretty good sign that there's no there's no driver. Uh, and if there is a drive driver, then you need to be in this assignee, I think. Yeah, nobody is willing to work on this right now. <clears throat> yeah, so but, this is not so. So by driver, I don't, I don't mean developer. I mean, I mean person who will nag and nag and nag until they find the the, the, the resources. Yeah, I think Valentine said maybe he could do something about this if I remember correctly today, but I'm not sure. Yeah, that would be excellent. So like the 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 question is, is who who should ask him? Probably me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna assign <laughs> I'm gonna assign you. Okay. Uh, simply because like the the, the a, a, an issue needs a driver, right? They need a person who can be the person who you say, oh, um, we need to do a new design for spin buttons, right? If somebody came to me in the UX team and the uh, chat, for instance, and said, oh, I'm, I have issues with spin buttons, I think they can be redesigned. I can point them not only at this issue, but I can also point them at you and say, Adam is driving this. So like, if you're a developer and you need, you know, you want to be able to help, uh, talk to him. He'll, he'll have all the information about who's currently involved in, in doing what, what jobs. Yeah. Uh, sure. yeah. My current approach is like, I see these issues while using uh, Inkscape. <clears throat> and then I see this issue popping up and again, again, again in, in uh, inbox. And I'm just referring, we know about this issue. We have solution, but nobody's working on it right now. So that's it, that's it. yeah, that's exactly it. And so it, 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 once you reach that recruitment and re resources side, you, you know it's a different job now. Uh, so for so for these assignees, I think that's a good a good option, right? So this I'm driving this particular one. I'm actually also the developer. Um, Adam, you're working on the spin buttons, for for example, uh, and think. I think I'm going to claim the multi-page at the top. I think I'm also going to claim the multi-page because I'm going to I'm going to nag and nag and nag and develop and develop and develop until I've done that. So um, I don't suppose anybody else, George, do you want to do you want to uh, be a nag for, for one of these issues? Anything? Anything seems yeah, really cool. Actually, actually, I had this thing. I think it was today or yesterday when someone tagged me on an issue. Because it was related to the about screen, it was a small improvement to the about screen, and yeah. then I felt, oh, okay, I could, I could take this and and do something, try to do something about it, and I, I was looking for a feature of 
kind of self-assigning, at least to me, but I think it's probably not, I didn't have permission for that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you have, a, if you don't have the perm permissions, like you, if you don't see what I see, uh, definitely let me know and I will uh, go into here. And start. Or I can just ask him, someone to, I mean, I can still work on it without it having, uh, being assigned to me, but I think it's you nice can, to visualize, they, as you say, yeah. Yeah, the, the, so the way we want to work uh, Inkscape is, is we want to give the most amount of permissions to people that it makes sense, right? They're going to go in and, and they're going to be adding things. So um, so this is the UX team, right? To, so Inkscape UX specifically. Um, what's your what's your Git, GitLab username? Uh, it's a bit difficult to spell. You can see it on the chat. Oh. El de la cajita. Yep. Because uh, if I pronounce it in Spanish, you probably wouldn't even recognize it. <laughs> it, it. I don't know. Um, so there was the El de la Cajita. El de la Cajita. Gee, you, you think I'd be confused by that J, but I, 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 uh, I don't know a bit of Spanish. You actually speak a bit of Spanish, right? A little, yeah. Uh, I found out the other day, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I actually have, have um, I, I, I did a hundred days of Duoling, Duol, Duolingo since the since the coronavirus started, and uh, I stopped last week because I, I I got tired of trying to keep up with it. Um, okay, oh, so yes. I've added you. Okay. I've added you as a developer. Um, so I want to see if you can assign yourself a task now. I'll try. Let me check. Yeah, when it comes to assigning Inkscape a new version num number, uh, <laughs> all the discussions that we have about that, um, <laughs> that that will probably be a discussion for the vectors team because they'll they'll be the ones who will have to advertise, uh, and and version number is definitely an advertisement type problem. Okay, I'm seeing now that issue actually where I'm tagged on it's actually in inbox still, so I guess the could be moved to the UX. Yeah. Post maybe, a, or... a, yeah, yeah, I think so. Post post a link to the to the public chat in, in Big Blue Button and we'll we'll have a look at it. Yeah. Link skip one instead. Okay, so this is the, the license tab. So uh, do you see this button, move, move issue, on yours? Um, it, it, you might not, because you might not have permissions in the in the inbox. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Only on yours, which is fine. I uh, have too many many permissions. Okay, so I set, I, I, I click on move. So this is now moved to the UX issue 36. And then you can assign yourself, hopefully. Okay, I'll try. Maybe there's no need to sort this out right now. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. We don't have. It's to do good that. as an um, example. Maybe. It's good an example, and and this actually is a good example of what counts as a, a user experience discussion, right? So, um, data lot having like having a think about this issue. Uh, Teen having a dis, uh, like a some notes. Uh, Nathan ta talking about some stuff. Like, this is people focusing on the issue, and as soon as you get to that point, it's no longer really an inbox issue. It's more of a uh, oh, now we're actually doing some design thinking. So I hope that clears up like the the, the, the distinction between the UX team and the, and the inbox. Because it's not just it's not just about the UX team actually. It's about the developer team too. Like we've had situations where crashes and uh, 1.0 release bugs were still in the, the inbox. And the problem is, is like if, if I'm fixing the problem, then it's not really an inbox issue anymore. Really, it's it it needs to be moved to the right team.
Okay, so we are actually out of time um, for the future features release um, portion of the Hackfest today. Uh, thank you, everybody, for for talking about the the uh, the features and and not only that, but also like how the UX team should interact and and think about this this task that we have about questions and, and how to organize ourselves on GitLab. I think this is important. We'll probably have to come back to this. Um, Adam, would you be would you be willing to do a meeting um, maybe like one month from now uh, to to like just get people together for maybe half an hour to, to talk about, you know, maybe what's happened in the last month and what, what we should do next? Yeah, but, um, if there's progress on anything we could do that like yeah i mean we the need i would say yeah yeah i mean it's mo mostly just to to uh as a cadence thing so we can be like hey if we uh, are we keeping to this does it do things seem bad or good or what yeah. um we can do that excellent then i'll what i'll do is i'll, I'll uh, create a timer task to to remind you or because <laughs> i forget all, all the time I, I i have to use my my calendar Okay. Um, right. Thank you, everybody. I'll be back in eight, eight minutes.